Hello Algebra 2. This is day 3 of unit 6. Today we're going to simplify expressions with rational exponents. Uh, the question is what do I need to remember about uh, simplifying expressions with exponents? And also what are the rules of exponents? Uh, to create an example, let's look at a to the 0 equals 1. Okay, this is a rule uh, is that when your base is raised to the zero power, you get one. So if I put a number in place of a, say I had five raised to the zero power, that's equal to one. Okay. Also remember if you have parentheses, say five x to the zero power, that's also equal to one. However, say we didn't have parentheses, say you just had five x to the zero power. Just think about the order of operations. The x raised to the zero power becomes one and then it multiplies to 5. So 5x to 0 power in this case would be 5. Next example, we have negative exponents. We're not allowed to leave exponents negative. So we have to make them positive, and what we do is move them. Okay, what I mean by that is think of a to the negative n as a to the negative n over 1. Um, so a to the negative n over 1 equals 1 over a to the positive n. So let's put... Uh, an example up there, say we had 4 to the negative 2. What we're going to do is move, remember 4 to the negative 2 could also be 4 to the negative 2 over 1. What we're going to do is put the 1 on top, so the denominator is now in place of the numerator, and then we're going to put our base 4 from the original problem and we're going to take the exponent and make it positive. Okay? So we get 1 over 4 squared, which equals 1 over 16. Next example, we have a to the m times a to the n. So the rule is uh, when you're multiplying and your bases are the same, you add the exponents. So if you have uh, a squared, times a cubed, notice the base is the same, we have a and a, okay? That's going to be equal to a to the 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, so we get a to the 5th, okay? Um, next example, uh, here we're dividing and the bases are the same. So what you do with the exponents in that case is subtract the exponents. So if we have uh, a to the sixth over a squared, for example, the base is the same, we're going to subtract the exponents. a to the sixth minus two, that equals a to the fourth. Next we have power of a power. Um, this rule, uh, you have parentheses, so you have a to the n to the nth power. Here, we're going to multiply the exponents. So a to the n to the nth power equals a to the n times n. So if we have, for example, a to the 6th power squared, that's equal to a to the 6 times 2, which equals a to the 12th. Uh, next, we have two factors inside of the parentheses. We have a, b, and they're being raised to an exponent outside the parentheses. So we have a, b to the nth power. So it's important that you remember, in a case like this, that each factor gets raised to the outside power. Okay? Notice a, b to the nth power equals a to the nth, b to the nth. So let's say we had x squared y inside parentheses. And we're cubing x squared y. So x squared y cubed would be equal to x to the 2 times 3, y to the 1 times 3, which would be equal to x to the 6th, y cubed.
Also, uh, if we're, we have a fraction inside of parentheses and we're raising that fraction to a power, remember that both the numerator and denominator get raised to that outside power. So if we had x over y to the fifth, that would be equal to x to the fifth over y to the fifth. Two more rules to remember. Um, here we see radicals. So take a look at the nth power of AB. Okay? That's equal to the nth power of A times the nth power of B. So say you had the fourth root of XY, that would be equal to the fourth root of X times the fourth root of y. Don't forget to put your indexes in there, okay? And also, uh, if you have the nth power of a over b, that could be rewritten as the nth power of a over the nth power of b. So, let's say we had the cube root of x over y that's going to be equal to the cube root of x over the cube root of y. And I'll put a box around that just to separate them. There you go. So those are your rules for exponents that we're going to be using. Now let's look, apply those rules. You can go ahead and pause this and try them on your own, or if you want, you can watch me do it. Um, but yeah, try them on your own first, and then compare your answers to mine. So for number one, we have x to the two-fifths times x to the four-fifths times x to the three-fifths. That's going to be equal to x to the two-fifths plus four-fifths plus three-fifths. Okay? So the bases were the same, so we're, when you multiply and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. What we're going to get is x to the nine-fifths, or nine over five. x to the nine over five. Next we have division. We have x to the negative 3 halves y to the 2 thirds over x to the 1 half y to the negative 1 third. Okay, so let's take a look at the x's. Uh, the bases are the same, right? We have an x over an x, so what we're going to do is uh, apply our rule. When we're dividing, what do we do with the exponents? We subtract them. So we have x to the negative 3 over 2 minus 1 half. Now let's, let's put our y's up there. We have y to the uh, 2 thirds minus negative 1 third. That's going to be x to the negative 4 over 2. All right, careful, there's a negative exponent. And then you have y to the 3 over 3. So negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. And 3 over 3 is 1, so we have y for the first, or just y. So now when we have x to the negative 2y, we can't leave that uh, negative exponent there. So the y is going to stay where it is. Okay, imagine x to the negative 2y over 1. Same thing, right? The y is going to stay on the top. The x is going to move to the bottom, and we're going to make its exponent positive. Now we're done with that one. Um, in, in example number three, we're going to apply our rules again. We have 16x to the negative 2 thirds, y to the eighth, all raised to the 3 fourth. So be really careful with that 16. 
Remember, it has an exponent also. It's a 1, right? So 16 to the 1 times the outside exponent, 3 fourths. Moving right along, right along, we have x to the negative 2 over 3 times 3 fourths. And then we have y to the 8th times 3 fourths. We want to simplify that, so let's start with 16 uh, raised to the 1 times 3 fourths. That's just 3 fourths, right? So we have 16 to the 3 fourths. We're going to get x to the negative 6 over 12 and y to the 24 over 4. Keep simplifying. 16 to the 3 fourths, that's fine as it is for now. Okay, x to the negative 6 over 12, we need to reduce that. That's x to the negative 1 over 2. And we also have a negative exponent there, so we'll change that in a second. And then we have y to the 24 over 4, which becomes y to the 6. Okay, so now let's finish it up. Imagine this was over 1. Okay, so in this case, um, 16 to the 3 fourths and y to the 6 are going to stay where they were. The x gets moved to the bottom because it had a negative exponent. And it multiplies the 1, which is down there, um, which x to the 1 half times 1 is x to the 1 half. So there's your final answer. 16 to the 3 fourths y to the 6 over x to the 1 half. Next, how do you convert an expression with radical notation to an expression with exponential notation? So I want you guys to think inside exponent over index. And this question applies to number one and two that you see there. So where you see uh, the fifth root of x cubed, and we're thinking inside exponent over index, we're taking it out of radical notation and putting it in to exponent. So if you have the fifth root of x cubed, well first that's equal to the fifth root of x cubed. Okay, and then now we're going to think inside exponent over index because what we're doing now is changing it from radical notation to an expression with exponential notation. So, x is going to be our base. The inside exponent was 3. The index was 5. So we get x to the 3 fifths. Okay? Number 2 is actually an easier example. You get m to the 2 sevenths. Again, think inside exponent over index. Then our question says, what would the reverse be and what would it look like? So we're going to go the other way this time. So say you had a over b to the n. That's going to be equal to the nth root of a to the b. And that rule applies to questions 3 and 4 in our notes. So let's look at a to the 5 thirds. Just notice we're going the other way. That's going to be equal to the third root or cube root of a to the fifth. And I'm going to cross out number five. You guys, you guys can try that if you like, but that's not in your notes. I just realized. Um, example number four, you have y to the 4 fifths. What's that going to be equal to? You said the fifth root of y to the fourth. You're correct. Way to go. So that's it for your notes. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in class. And uh, please bring any questions that you have with you. And uh, we look forward to answering them. Have a great night.